Welcome to the People Leaders Podcast, the audio resource for managers and business leaders creating high-performing teams. Join leadership and team development experts Jan and Michelle Turkelson each week as they explore both subjects from every angle. Through practical tips, valuable insights, and compelling interviews with leadership experts around the world, you'll learn how to bring out the best in your staff and how to give your best as a leader. Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, It's Michelle here from People Leaders, and I am flying solo today. Uh, And uh, I'm okay with that because I am joined with a very interesting um, uh, person that I'm going to introduce you to, and that is Michael Yinger. So welcome, Michael. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Happy to be here. Terrific. So Michael, CEO and co-founder at Resume Sieve, and we'll get into that in a moment. But Michael uh, is a seasoned um, senior exec with experience creating and building and managing organisations and providing strategic advice um, by a board of director membership in both US and international. Um, Michael has years and years of experience in the corporate world um, and direct experience managing technical as well as strategic initiatives in traditional matrix management environments. And we could go on and on about your bio, really, Michael, but I suppose a testament to somebody's success is, you know, what are you doing right now? And what are the things that you are, you know, adding to our body of knowledge in this space of people, leadership and development? And just before, um, you know, we started recording, you were were sharing um you know, what your latest technology is and you are part of an HR software company. So, like, let it rip. Michael, tell us all about the the, the latest technology that you've got. Sure, sure. Uh, what What we're about is creating tools that enable the recruiter and the small business to be more effective around their recruitment process. Part of that is time savings. There's a productivity benefit from it. You can do things more quickly. And another part of it is consistency. Too, all too often when the, the recruiting process is manual, you, you, you get results that are all over the place because, you, you know, it, it, it depends on the time of day you review the resumes. It depends on how you're feeling about things. You, you, you really run into that sort of variability that is, that's it, it, human nature, so to speak. So the, the first offering that we put in the market, we call the sieve. And this is intended to speed up and standardize the process of evaluating resumes. So imagine a situation, you're the talent acquisition leader for a company and you need a recruiter. You post a job. This is a real, real true story. You post a job, you get 700 resumes in 36 hours. And then you print them all. And then you and two of your staff spend four weeks evaluating them to figure out who to bring in. And so I'm talking to this person and I say, well, okay, so what's wrong with that? She said, well, I probably wanted number 701. Yeah, exactly. You had to cut it off at 700. 36 hours, you know, who, are those all the best? Those are just mm-hmm. the first, first movers, right? So uh, plenty of opportunities like that, plenty of stories like that. Now, of course, we're in a little bit different environment at the moment, uh, particularly in the U.S. as the economy starts to really heat up again. And so another, another thing to consider is maybe you have the skills within your organization. Have you really fully evaluated the capabilities of the people that you've got? Could you be moving somebody to a more appropriate job based on their skill set and giving them an opportunity, saving yourself the trouble of having to look outside? Because there's, there's a lot of challenges looking outside the organization right now. So it's, it, our, our, our focus is to continue to refine this tool, bringing the insight to the people who are doing the evaluation of the resume. Now, you might say, well, wait a minute, a resume, old school. Well, not so much anymore. You know, that, the, the, there, was, there was a feeling as much as 10, 15 years ago in talent acquisition, the resume was going to go away. LinkedIn, we we're all going to have LinkedIn and we wouldn't need a resume. Well, the reality is that it still is the common thread between most hiring. Yes, there are tools, there are different ways to evaluate people. And by and large, the resume is still a significant component. And then you you layer that with the fact that 50% of the jobs filled in the US are filled without the benefit of technology. That means people are going through a lot of resumes manually. 
That's right. And and when you think about, you know, LinkedIn and your resume, you may have exactly the same information on LinkedIn anyway in your resume, but people don't print out your LinkedIn report. They'll go in nope. and just verify, but they'll still look at the at the resume. Yeah, definitely. Yep. So why, why does it actually work, Michael? If, if I was, um, uh, I, I love the fact that we could use it internally. There are uh, many organisations that we're working with and they have a principle of trying to promote talent from yep. within. However, a lot of managers come with their own biases about, you know, yep. whether or not people, you know, have the skills and capabilities. So if we could explore both those, first of all, how could we use that technology within a larger organisation? Organization, and then sure. how do small organisations use it um, getting external people in? So we'll start with the um, large organisation trying to um, promote from within. Sure. So it's it, the, 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 the concept would be well, once a resume is loaded in our system, you can search against it. Um, we, don't, we, don't, you know, we don't limit you. So you can, you can go back and look at history. So the exercise would be to get a resume, maybe standardized, maybe not, from all of your people that highlights their skills. Then you, you need to fill a job. Well, you've got a job description. Our system will ingest the job description. And then you can evaluate your team against the job description before you even post it to the outside world. Gives you a chance to take a look at your people and give, you know, give them an opportunity to take on something new within the organization. That several articles. I actually, I posted several articles this week about the uh, the some are calling it the coming the coming tsunami of people leaving post pandemic because yeah. they've been cooped up in their jobs. Right? They're just <laughs> yeah. ready to quit. They're ready yeah. to head yeah. to the hills. They don't know where they're going. They want a Happening different here. job. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. And so, are you are you? targeting the right people in your organization? Are you giving them the opportunities? It, it's it, early in my career, I had the opportunity to move around a lot. I saw it as an opportunity. Some people, you know, thought I was crazy, but I, it, it, for one company, we moved nine times in 11 years, including twice to Asia from the U S nobody else was moving. It was just me because I was willing. Well, maybe hmm. there were other people willing. Maybe there are other people who had the skill set to do that. Do you know what your people are capable of? All too often, the sort of the gold in the organization is the people you already got. And what are you doing with them? How are you managing mm -hmm. with them? And so that's, that's the real, uh, we, we think that that's a in, very interesting use case for companies that, that, are, that are struggling with finding the right talent in the marketplace. Oh, without a doubt. So, Michael, Jan and I are also Myers-Briggs practitioners, so personality. Um, we look at the, the Myers-Briggs sure. personality indicator. Yep. Yep. And, you yep. know, we often talk about introversion and extroversion. Now, people with a preference for extroversion, you know if they want to be promoted and you know, you know, what their interests are because they are going to share that with you. And <laughs> so, true. yeah, so people with a preference for introversion, however, are less likely, you know, to raise their hand to be seen as the, you know, the go-getters and the networkers but you know there is a rich um you know body of talent within the organization that happen yeah. to be introverted and so you don't actually hear from them very often and that's what i love about this technology is that it's very egalitarian isn't it in, exactly in its, yeah exactly yeah and so so let's take that a step further you talk introvert extrovert let's without getting specific let's talk about demographics within the organization mm -hmm. that are less likely to stand up for themselves yeah. You know, you, you, you have the opportunity to tap them on the shoulder where they're, they may be reluctant to raise their hand. They may be perfectly skilled. You're reaching out to them. It's changing the, the dynamic of that conversation mm. to be one of, of elevating someone as opposed to someone trying to crawl their way up, perhaps. Yeah. And, and that, you know, that your, your organization, the culture is going to notice that. The people are going to notice that. It's going to become, a, a, you know, a real hallmark, I think it's possible to become a real hallmark. Uh, companies that have solid internal mobility programs tend to have lower attrition because mm. people know they, they have opportunities elsewhere inside That's the right. company.
Yeah. And I'm just wondering now, you know, my, my head is spinning with all the, you know, potential opportunities for once you've got this data loaded in terms of development opportunities. Mm -hmm. can, can you do, you know, can you actually then scan your organisation and see, you know, where you do have an, uh, a lot of talent in certain areas or where you are lacking in certain skills and capabilities and, and those sorts of things? Oh, sure. Absolutely. It's uh, the, well, one the, the, the way our, our, our tool is set up, you can have re required criteria, stuff you have to have, preferred criteria, stuff you'd like to have. And so it, it, in a sense, it's a very simple Boolean of ands, this yeah. and this and this. And mm -hmm. so you, you, could, you could very easily spot gaps in your organization, plus that the way the, 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 the tool works, particularly on, on the parsing side, we, we parse the resume first before we bring it in. Things that are similar are found. So, for example, um, customer success is also customer support, is also service support. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how many different ways are there to say Java? Uh, <laughs> I, was te I was testing some new functionality today. If you're looking for someone who's a project management professional, you just put in PMP and we'll figure out whether they're project management professional. You want somebody with a, with, a, with a bachelor's degree. You don't care what it is. You just want a bachelor's degree. It'll find a BA, it'll find a BS, it'll find a bachelor's degree, it'll find the, the European versions of that and so forth, making it easier to find these things with similar terms. Yeah. So, M Michael, what about the soft skills side of things? How, yeah. how, how does that get factored in? So the, uh, the, the parsing looks at three types of skills. It looks at the soft skills, which you just covered. It looks at the the work skills, and then it looks at the technical skills uh, and, and then it categorizes those and then bring it back. And so then it's, it's simply a matter of asking for them. When you, if you, mm. um, you, you, have, you have a choice of building the job description or parsing a job description. And so if you parse the job description, it finds all those things, leadership, uh, management, coaching, whatever the case may be. If those words, it, this is all dependent on the resume. If those words are present on the resume, we're going to find them and we're going to offer them up so that you could use those as choices for evaluating the, the set of people that you want to look at. Yeah. Uh, so it'd be interesting, uh, that person that you were talking about that had the 700, you know, job applicants, yeah. you know, comparing, um, you know, if you were to, to run it through your system and then compare yeah. it to what their final result was, you know, I wonder how that would have played out well, for them. It, it, you know, interesting. I, I'll give you another true story. My, my chairman, unbeknownst to me, he's, he's the CEO of another company. He hired a chief revenue officer. He had 250 applicants, manually reviewed all the resumes. He and the HR manager took him 10 days. He took those 250 resumes, dumped them into the system, put in his job description, and his candidate was in the top three. Oh, love it. Okay, yeah. there you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if if you if you can identify the skills that you want and then mm. then you can use that for the next time, right? There's yeah. there's so much talk of persona in the organization. You know, whether you're talking about your your advertising or you're talking about the kind of people who are gonna work the best in a particular situation, once you figure out what that persona looks like and you can build a job description that generates that kind of person, then you can just reuse it. The next time yeah. you get a set of resumes, just run it against the same job description, you know, particularly if you're hiring the same things on, on any sort of frequency. Fantastic. And so, so um, if you are um, a small business, for example, mm -hmm. how could you use this? Let, let's say, yeah, because I'm, I'm just thinking of a business that I'm working with at the moment, it's a small engineering uh, business, and they, they actually aren't big enough to have an HR department. So it is somebody that, you know, fulfills that um, part-time, yep. they're doing their wages. Yeah, that's right. And so they really don't have the skill set in, um, you know, what are we looking for and how do we look at and sort through all of these resumes? How could they use that given that they have no real skill in HR? Sure. It, 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 so, yeah. I guess you have to start with the assumption that they understand they, they, you know, they've got a job description and they know what they're looking for. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. And so again, the, the, the process is you ingest the job description. It, it breaks it out. You select the things that you want to search for because inevitably a job description will have many more skills than, than you might 
normally think. I, I, I parsed the job description the other day and, and based on the, on the words in the job description, it had 45 different skills. Not all 45 are as critical. Pick the top 10, right? Yeah, yeah. Then you load in those resumes and then you evaluate them. All of this takes minutes, literally. It, it, uh, parsing a job description is a matter of seconds. Parsing 50 resumes, just picking a random number. Parsing 50 resumes takes about a minute and a half. And then running those resumes against that job description, it's another couple of minutes. All this is online, um, easy, easy to test. And then, then you, what you can do is you can say, well, okay, oh, with the evaluation, the, the results come back with those that meet all your requirements and then those that don't, and they're rank ordered. They're scored and they're rank ordered. Well, maybe you didn't have anybody meet your requirements. Well, is there something tricky about your requirements, right? Maybe you're yeah. saying you need somebody, you, you said that the requirement is that they've got five years of, of SaaS experience, SaaS software experience, and you're looking and realizing, well, there's nobody with more than three years. Okay, maybe you need to change that. Maybe that needs to become a preferred rather than required. Mm -hmm. Mandatory that you have a, a college degree. Well, the candidates aren't coming up with those college degrees. It, it, it gives you the chance to do the playing around that is so difficult with oh, one, yeah. if it's paper, yeah. you know, you know, well, okay, maybe I don't need somebody that's got, you know, these three skills. Maybe I can do it with just these two. It also gives, there was a very interesting article the other day about hiring people for potential. And the, the example is, is hiring people who are, um, have the, the, have been in the kind of experience that will allow them to be good developers in this case, what the article was talking about. And they're often, you know, it's not always people who've been the technical, uh, through mm. technical training. It could be mm. somebody who's um, had some customer service experience or somebody who's been in the music industry and so forth. And so it allows you to, to play with those kinds of circumstances. The interesting thing that we found through just empirical uh, working with the system is that even as you change those things, very often you still end up with the same people near the top, which says that there is some commonality that you're willing to drive, you're able to drive to get to this list. Now, we don't tell you who the best person is. We just tell you, based on your criteria, this is the order. Now, you go in and you look. We, you know, we, we give you some, some evaluation. For example, if you, um, if you pick a skill, you can click on the skill and it shows you where it shows up in the resume. So you can determine well, is it really relevant? I, I was looking for a customer service lead and th this person scored very highly. Well, the problem was it was all in the real estate industry. Maybe not transferable given that I'm a software company, just yeah. as an example, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, so, yeah. So, but it makes it easier for, for me because now I've had them evaluated on the skills that I need, on, that, I, that I think I need for this job. And so I can begin to look at some of those soft things as you talked about, where, where have they done this before, um, we also look at recency, you know, it's really easy to say you've got this skill, but have you used it lately? Mm -hmm. <laughs> is yeah, is yeah, it one yeah. of those skills that goes stale? All of this is focused on taking some of the, the drudgery out of finding the right candidates. I mean, yeah. it really, that's really the best way to look at it. I know. And then you can, you know, use your energy, effort and skill for, um, you know, the high value work, really, because that's what we're yeah. trying to do is get rid of the low value work and to speed exactly. up the amount of time, because it takes a lot of time to sort through all those, um, all those resumes. Well, or, or, or you start doing shortcuts. You know, yeah. you, you, you see the stats that say, well, the average resume gets 30 seconds worth of review. What in the world can you see in 30 seconds other than whether mm. you like the font or not? Yeah, yeah. And so what you're doing is you're saying, oh, wrong address. Oh, the uh, wrong company. Oh, I don't find Java. Now, then think about the, no two resumes or CVs are alike. The, you know, there, there are different national standards. There are, yeah. you know, there are different structural standards that, you know, and so just, are you, are you looking at two pieces of paper and, and this person is, has a skills-based resume, this person has a uh, um, experiential-based resume. How do you, how do you find the commonality between those two and do that dependably time and time again? Yeah. And so does it's your technology... Yeah, that is crazy, and which makes you think. Actually, when when you put an ad out, there is it's almost like you should have a, a template in terms of how you want people to respond to it. Um, right. But that you don't have to because that's what you don't your, have to. Yeah, that's what your software does. 
But, That's right. So Mike, Michael, how did you get into this? Because you are interested and have been involved in coaching and developing people and running businesses. How did you sort of get into this area? Yeah, so it's interesting. I've, I've been in talent acquisition, um, I, I consider it to be my third career. I've been in talent yeah. acquisition about 20 years. And early in, um, it, it, or actually it was late in my second phase, which was consulting, um, I worked for a small company and I met a guy and we stayed in touch over the years. He came to me about uh, a year and a half ago and said, look, his family had created this company that was an IT staffing company and they'd written this software and they, they sold the company, they kept the software. Would I be interested in coming in and helping them commercialize the software? Now, I, in my job at the time, I was in tar- charge of global sales and also product management. And so I understood HR technology, what was going on in the HR technology space. COVID came along. I was no longer necessary <laughs> at my organization. Happens. And so he called me and said, looks like something's changed on your LinkedIn. Um, you still interested? You know, you want to talk to us? And we said, sure. We had a conversation, turned out to be a good fit. And so it, I was employee number one. There was the board and then there was me. And since then, we've added, we're up to about 18 people now. Um, and, and of course, we do have the, the product in the marketplace. So it's, it's been a pretty wild year. Get, oh, fantastic. And, and we have never met face to face as an well, organization. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I hear that know, with I... hear that with so many teams. It's crazy, isn't it? However, you you were still kicking goals. You were still, you know, uh, achieving, moving forward as an yep, organization. Absolutely. It's really changed our mindset about you know what we ex- expect and think good performance looks like, and you know, oh, we definitely have to be face to face to have this meeting. Those yep. those rules just do not apply anymore, do they? Um, yeah, out the window. Uh, yeah, out the window. And so tell me, so how, how have you used your knowledge of talent acquisition and in, in, in building this company and using this technology? Sure. It's such uh, an important area, really is. Yeah, well, it, I, I think the, the, um, the, the advantage of having that skill set has helped as we've developed the product. What will people really want to use? Where will it fit? you know, what, what should our emphasis be? You know, it's one thing to build software. Um, you know, a lot of people can build software. You give them, you give them an idea and they can build software that, that um, actually solves whatever that, that, that question is. And does it really fit with what the customers are looking for? You know, if, if, if you know, we're, 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 we're talking about a pretty wide swath of customers. Um, you know, our, our, our target market is small to mid-sized businesses, those that are less than 500 people. Yep. Um, mostly because those are the companies that don't have technology, yep. are still doing it the manual way, and, and and as you already pointed out, don't have somebody doing this as a full time job, mm-hmm. and so they're the ones who have the need for this. And so I think I've been able to add from my experience: what are those people looking for? What's going to make it easier for them? What's the feature set need to look like? What should we be working on next? Mm-hmm. Is is um, you know a, a constant conversation that we're in. Um, you know, we literally have probably three years worth of ideas that we could develop, but you know, which one, which ones are really going to land, right? You yeah, know, it's, yeah. it's the, 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 the next one we're working on that um, my, my uh, chief technology officer is really excited about is collaboration. We started out, it's, it's a single user package, multiple, you know, you can have multiple people in the same company, but they can't really collaborate. So the, the next iteration is that a small company will be able to collaborate, to be able to share resumes, trade jobs back and forth, Excellent. you know, take, take advantage of the fact that, you know, maybe you got two, two or three people, four people who are doing the, the, the hiring, give them the chance and then collaborate with your hiring manager. Let your hiring manager come in and look at the results and say, you know what, maybe I don't need that skill. And this, this is the worst thing in the world for a recruiter. You spend some time understanding what the, the hiring manager wants. They see the resumes and say, you know what? <laughs> instead of that yeah. how about that <laughs> and you know it, it's it's the, the, with the you know a lot of the technologies out there today you know somebody said to me well look you can do pre-screening questions in the applicant tracking system you can you can categorize people as they're coming to the door so that's true except that you can only ask them once hmm. 
What happens if you yeah. decide halfway through that you would rather have a different pre-screening question? Well, you can't do that. Well, with our tool, you can. Oh, wow. And so what feedback have you been getting from your clients um, having used your, your, um, your technology? Yeah, the, uh, the very positive feedback. Now, there have been some requests. Well, could you do this? Could you do mm -hmm. that? You know, there, 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 there's always that kind of stuff. But, but very positive that it's, it, it, it produces results that make sense. And it is, really is a, a time saver once, once you get to learn how to use it. It really is a time saver in terms of moving through the process. So it's, okay. it's, been, uh, it's been very positive, very positive uh, sort of feedback that we've been getting. Terrific, terrific. So, Michael, is there anything else you'd like to, to share with uh, people who are listening to the podcast? Anything it else? Is, yeah. Broad topic. I know, I know. We we do we we yeah we go wide and then we narrow in and and yeah, I think yeah. particularly HR you know we, we do have a lot yeah. of HR managers that listen into um into the podcast. Is there you know, it, like it, you know there was you you tickled my fancy a bit when you asked me to send you some questions in advance and I had a very specific focus when I thought about those which is you know one of the things that that I've work to instill in in my fledgling organization is, is is something that that I learned through being coached which is the importance of coaching in an organization and managing through coaching rather than managing through direction now you know once in a while it feels like you have to stop and give an order except that you know I'm not sure that's the kind of culture I want to create I want to create a culture that people are working together, working collaboratively, and they're evaluated based on their results. And that's, that's one of the nice things I think that, that our software fits right in with is that it, it generates a result that you can look at and you can evaluate objectively. And I think that managing people can be done in that same kind of way that, you know, it's, it's it, so much of, of pers personnel evaluation becomes qualitative, subjective, where if you're managing based on results, if you're holding yeah. people to results that you expect them to produce, it's a totally different kind of conversation. It, it really takes a lot of the, the angst. You, you talked about introverts and extroverts and, you, you, you know, a situation where, you know, you, you have to deliver this negative feedback. Well, why? It, did they do what they, you asked them to do? Did they do what they agreed to do? So it's, it's been an interesting time putting those kind of practices in place as we've developed our, our own corporate culture. And, and, and you've done it virtually as well. So, so what are yeah. some of the, um, you know, I suppose, tips or insights that you have in coaching people in a virtual um, situation or scenario? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think the, the most important thing is around making and managing agreements. Yeah. What is it that you're agreeing to do? And then, and then confirming that. So you, you're sure that you're communicating, because right? Because you said it doesn't mean to say they've exactly heard what you right. said. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. <laughs> and, and then there's tracking it and making yeah. sure that, it, it, that it's done. Um, we, we did the usual thing um, at the start where, you know, we were using Google Sheets to keep track of our, um, uh, you know, and, and you can imagine starting up a company, hundreds of action items. Um, we, we eventually found a tool that makes it a lot easier to, um, to do that. And, and so everybody has access to it. Everybody sees what's there. Um, you can choose to be notified or not, depending on when things happen. So I have oversight to, to everything that people are working on. People can see what I'm working on. We, we know what our commitments are in terms of times and dates. Uh, we're not perfect at it. You know, we're still, you know, we blow by, blow by deadlines just like everybody else. But it's, it's, it's owning that and, and putting that into place can really make a difference, yeah, I think, in how the organization yeah. runs to the effectiveness of the organization. What, what's the tool? What's the tool that you use? To uh, no, I, I get nothing for this. No. Um, so it says, I'm just telling you that this is not yeah. a, a paid plug. It's called yeah. monday.com. Monday Right. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. a it's a it's a software tool uh, out of uh, Israel, as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. and they have done a phenomenal job creating a platform that allows you to manage what goes on in your organization. I, I attended one of their webinars early on, 
and it was a small company, uh, like 15 pizza shops. Their entire organization was built into this application. Payroll, when is the pizza going to be done? Do we have enough yeah. inventory, time cards, HR? So what we've done is start up, don't want to spend a lot of money. So yeah. we use money.com as an APS. We use money.com for hourly reporting. We use money.com for uh, paying uh, uh, expenses. And uh, actually, we even use it for our, our customer support tool. If you put in a ticket, that something wrong in the application, it shows up on money.com. But we also use it for tracking just all the activities that we're working on, whether it's a project or it's just a one-off. Um, in my case, uh, weekly reminders to do things. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, and there's transparency week. there. Oh, I love that. I mean, it, yeah, yeah, anything that we, you know, can share with um, with people who listen. I love they, it. You know, could experiment with. Yeah, that that's fantastic. Yep. And and so I, I, I'm also interested because Jan and I are big proponents of having coaching conversations or regular coaching conversations, you know, with team members. Do you have a rhythm that you are in in terms of frequency um, of having those coaching conversations? Yeah, Perhaps. it's it, it's it's as much as possible weekly. Yeah, where you know, it, 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 as you can imagine, because we're virtual, we have a lot of meetings because that's you know you, you don't have you, you don't have the the opportunity to catch somebody in the hallway or go out and grab a sandwich or whatever um, it, it might occur. And so uh, a regular weekly go over what we're working on, how we doing on, on action items and so forth. That's that. So it, it, there is that rhythm. Now it, it, that was a rhythm I had from, from previous where, you know, one-on-one -on, -one on a weekly basis as much as possible. And, you know, along with that sort of keeping down the number of, of direct reports. Now it's not a problem right now yeah. for us, Yeah. but, you know, watching that, I, w one of the lessons I, I learned from my previous boss, was um, I, I became part of the organization because they bought us from somebody else. Mm -hmm. You know, we were a carve out. And she really struggled um, for, for several months with 15 direct reports because it was wow. the two combined management teams. And it took her a while to sort it out and get it down to where it was manageable. And I learned from that that, you know, you just, you can't give everybody what they need uh, if you've got too many direct reports. And so, yeah. so it's something to watch for. Yeah, definitely. There, there is a limit to that. Uh, the so there was something else that you mentioned in terms of you know having your your coaching conversations and um, checking in because you know what we are all for um, being clear but kind. <laughs> you know, setting expectations uh, and you know being able to follow through. How yep. do you know that you've hit the mark when you have explained? Or, and there is agreement about, you know, the expectation that, you know, you expect of somebody in terms of delivering something. How do you know that it's landed? Uh, I, I, the, the approach that I take is a double confirmation. Yeah. I say what it is. I ask them, what did they hear? And then I repeat it back to them and give them another chance to add some feedback. So it really is making sure that the communication is working. Because all yeah. too often, and, and and we've had our our opportunities. I, you know, we had a we had a board meeting today, and the, the chairman said to me, "Well, where's this?" And I said, "Ooh, did you ask me for that?" And he went back to his notes and said, "Well, yeah, we said this," and I, and I said, "Oh, that's what you meant." So you know, so it's, you know, we're not perfect. We're not perfect. Yeah. We're we're still we're still learning, but it's but it's recognizing that and and owning it, right? It's yeah, it's owning yeah, it, taking responsibility totally. for it, and and yeah. then making sure that you're getting the pieces done. Yeah, love that, love that double confirmation. Yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah. um, uh, I'm gonna weave that in. <laughs> love it. Okay. Um, okay. So, is there anything else that you would like to share, Michael? That that's been rich um, in information and ideas that uh, people, not only from a practical point of view and the technology, but some of the uh, ways that you approach your leadership and coaching. Given that you've all done it, you know, virtually, which is fantastic. Yeah. For an organization as successfully as you have during that period of time is really phenomenal so congratulations thank you thank you i, I think we've 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 accomplished a lot we're, we're not anywhere near where we want to be yet and there's a you know that the, the uh, w one of our board members um said just after we launched the application in all seriousness he said okay that was all pre-game now <laughs> now we're in the game right now the time has started <laughs> yeah, it gets and, real. Uh, that's, yeah, that's definitely the truth. That's definitely the truth. Certainly, 
for those who are, you know, this is this is not my first startup, although it's, this is the furthest any startup I've worked on has gotten. So that, that's kind of uh, a good thing. Um, you know, it it you got to stick with it. You got to stick yeah. with it. And it doesn't it doesn't come easily. You know, you, you, you go back and you look at, at, at some of the great successes and, you know, it, it Facebook. Facebook was not an immediate success. Google was not an immediate success. Uh, you know, HubSpot, you know, all some of these, you know, ZipRecruiter, which is now public. Mm-hmm. You know, how did ZipRecruiter get to go public? They spent $600 million in advertising to get yeah, people to use go. their product. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And it's it not applies to successful people. You, you know, listen to interviews and, and they say, just keep at it. Just stick yeah. at it. You know, even yeah. Madonna, I remember she was saying, you know, a lot of people would have given up by now at a certain period of time. They give up at the 11th hour and it's at the 11th hour. Between that and midnight, <laughs> you know, things start to change. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I read an article not too long ago and they were looking at successful people and how did they become successful people. And the, the, the two folks that I remember specifically were Andre Agassi, uh, tennis player, and Jerry Seinfeld, comedian. Mm. And they, they, the, the, the commonality, the thread through this article was, well, you know, what, how, how is it that you became successful at what you did? No plan B. <laughs> right. Plan A has to work. Seinfeld okay. said, I, ha- yeah. Yeah, I had to make yeah. this comedy work because I didn't have anything else I was any good at. Mm. <laughs> and now he's a, you know, a, you know, multi, multi-millionaire. Andre Agassi, endless trophies and whatnot. It, you know, it, it, it's, it, that's the way I've approached this particular opportunity. And, and, and I've heard that, that sort of comment you hear from people like Mark Cuban and whatnot, that if you're really not in the game, if, you know, you, and we've had people like this uh, for, who've been with us for a while and then gone off because, you know, mm. they've only got one foot in the game. Yeah. And so, you know, the going gets a little tough or they see something a little more. Oh, great. Go do it. You know, it's it's uh, either this whole idea that you can't let people go or you got to fight them when they leave. No, you know, you got to be you got to want to be here. You got to be in the game. Otherwise, we will not be all successful. In. Yeah, all yep. win. Totally agree. Totally agree. That's how yep. we run our our um. Uh, I don't want to say business. It doesn't feel like a business, people leaders. But yeah, <laughs> that's how we run, people leaders. So, yeah. Michael, fantastic talking to you. Um, lots of information that we can um share with our listeners, and we will post a link to your business and the um the technology that you have on um uh, on the notes on the show notes to the podcast. And uh, yes, good good luck with your business. It sounds Thanks, like you're Michelle. A great I appreciate time. it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, glad glad to glad to talk with you and glad to share. And uh, it's been a great experience. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed today's episode of the People Leaders Podcast. For show notes and other resources, please visit us at peopleleaderspodcast.com. While you're there, you can subscribe for future episodes so you can continue your own leadership journey. And please be sure to share this and other episodes with your friends and colleagues. The People Leaders Podcast is brought to you by the Experts On Air Podcast Network.